This is my first video lesson for Unit 15, Redox Chemistry. In this lesson, we're going to determine the oxidation number of an atom. Go to page 2 in the class packet. You can download the Redox class packet from my website. Motivation, what are oxidation state? Where in the course did we see this before? If you look at the periodic table in the reference table, you see that the oxidation numbers of each element is listed on the top right corner. Learning target. At the end of the lesson, I'll be able to assign oxidation numbers to elements in a compound and in an ion. Home will be number one, which will be a junipod based on this lesson. So oxidation numbers is a positive or negative or neutral number that is assigned to an element to indicate the number of electrons gained or lost. So on the periodic table, each element has a set of oxidation numbers on the right side. Oxidation numbers are also known as oxidation states or charge. Chemists use oxidation numbers or oxidation states to keep track of how many electrons an atom has. It doesn't always correspond to the real charge of an atom. Therefore, the oxidation number is an imaginary charge that the atom would have if all the bonds to the atoms were completely ionic. So later on in the lesson, when we're trying to figure out the oxidation number of each atom in a compound, we have to pretend that there's only ionic bonds and that each atom either gained or lose electrons. Check of understanding number one, from the last term, how do we determine which atom gains or loses electrons during bonding? So we know metals tend to lose electrons and non-metals tend to gain electrons. This is because metals typically have low electronegativity while non-metals typically have high electronegativity. So as you can see, iron, which is a metal, has no negative oxidation numbers. They're all positive oxidation numbers. Atoms with high electronegativity will have a negative oxidation number. This is because they're more likely to gain electrons, and electrons have a charge of negative one. An atom with a low electronegativity will have a positive oxidation number, this is because they're more likely to lose electrons. So in summary, if the atom's oxidation number is positive, it's lost electrons. If its oxidation number is negative, it gained electrons. And if the oxidation number is zero, it did not gain or lose electrons. So here are the rules of assigning oxidation numbers. You have to memorize this for the Regents exam. So the first rule is that neutral elements always have an oxidation number of zero. Here are some examples of substances of only one element or one atom. They have an oxidation number of zero. The second rule is that the oxidation number of an ion is the same as the charge of the ion. For example, N minus 2 has an oxidation number of minus 2. Chlorine plus 7 has an oxidation number of positive 7. The third rule is that some ions have only one possible oxidation state besides zero. For example, group 1 will always have an oxidation number of positive 1, and group 2 will have an oxidation number of positive 2. Rule number 4, some atoms have a common oxidation state with exceptions depending on what elements it is bonding with. Note on the reference table, Oxygen lists one oxidation number, but there are other ones that are not listed. So let's look at some examples. For example, oxygen usually has a minus two oxidation state, except in peroxides, in which O has a minus one, for example, hydrogen peroxide, and if it's bonding with elements more electronegative than oxygen, it has a positive two in OF2. Hydrogen usually has a positive one oxidation state, but can have a negative one oxidation state when it's bonding with a group one or group two metal. This is because group one and group two metals are less electronegative than hydrogen. An example of this would be sodium hydride. Halogens usually have a negative one oxidation state unless it's bonded to fluorine or oxygen because fluorine and oxygen are more electronegative. The fifth and last rule is that the total sum of oxidation numbers in a compound is zero, 
and the total sum of the oxidation numbers in a polyatomic ion is the charge of the ion. Here's an example. The sum of the oxidation numbers in the compound will be zero. The sum of the oxidation numbers in a polyatomic ion is the charge of the polyatomic ion. So make sure you memorize these five rules for the Regents exam. For the rest of the lesson, we'll be practicing applying these rules. Learning check number one, the oxidation numbers of all the atoms in H2SO4 must add up to what? Pause the video and resume as completed. The answer is choice one, zero. That is rule number five. Learning check number two, oxygen will have a positive oxidation number when combined with which element? Pause the video and resume as completed. The answer is choice one, fluorine, because fluorine is more electronegative than oxygen. Therefore, oxygen will have a positive oxidation number and fluorine will have a negative one. Second minute staying number two, from rule number four, why do some elements have different oxidation numbers depending on what is bonding with? Because of the difference of electronegativity, write the oxidation numbers of the following. So N minus three will have an oxidation number of minus three. This is from rule number two. For B, Br plus five will have an oxidation number of positive five. The charge of the ion is the oxidation number. For carbon, since it's neutral and is a single atom, the oxidation number is zero, according to rule number one. For D, O2 also has an oxidation number of zero because it's a single element and is neutral. Write two symbols with oxidation state of positive five. Here are two examples. Write two symbols with oxidation state of zero. Here are some examples. In practice number one, we'll be determining the oxidation numbers of all the elements in the following compounds. So we're going to use a table to help us organize the information. Let's look at CH4. Since CH4 is a neutral compound, the sum of the oxidation numbers should be zero according to rule number five. The next step is to write the subscript of each element. Carbon has a subscript of one. Hydrogen has a subscript of four. We know that hydrogen can be positive one or negative one, and carbon can be negative four, positive two, or positive four according to the periodic table. Since H is less electronegative than carbon, H will be positive and carbon will be negative. So hydrogen will have an oxidation number of positive one and carbon will have an oxidation number of minus four. To check our answers, we have to figure out the sum of the oxidation number of each element. To do that, we're gonna multiply the subscript and the oxidation number. For carbon, it will be one times negative four, which is negative four. For hydrogen, it will be four times positive one, which is positive four. So as you can see, the sum of the oxidation numbers will be zero. So again, carbon has a negative four oxidation number and hydrogen has a positive one oxidation number in the compound CH4. This is the answer. Let's look at another example. Here we have carbon dioxide. Since carbon dioxide is a neutral compound, the sum of the oxidation numbers will be zero. Carbon has a subscript of one and oxygen has a subscript of two. On the periodic table, carbon can have a possible oxidation state of negative four or positive two or positive four. Since carbon is less natural negative than oxygen, carbon will be a positive oxidation number. So we have to figure out is carbon going to be positive two or positive four. We know oxygen is negative two and the sum of the oxidation states for oxygen will be negative four. Two times negative two is negative four. We know that the sum of the oxidation numbers in CO2 has to be zero. So the sum of the oxidation states of carbon has to be positive four. Since there's only one carbon, the oxidation number of carbon will be positive four. So carbon will be positive four and oxygen will be negative two in CO2. This is the answer. Learning check number three, in which substance is the oxidation number of chlorine equal to positive one? Pause the video and resume as completed. 
Cl2 consists of only one element, therefore Cl will have an oxidation number of 0. For Cl2O, O has an oxidation number of negative 2, so each Cl will have an oxidation number of positive 1, so that the sum of the oxidation numbers will be 0. So the answer is choice 2. Learning check number 4, what is the oxidation number of manganese and KMNNO4? Pause the video and resume as completed. So K has an oxidation number of positive 1 because it's a group 1 element. Oxygen has an oxidation number of minus 2, but we have 4 of them, so the total will be negative 8. Therefore, manganese must be positive 7 in order for the sum should be 0. The answer is choice 1. Let's look at a couple examples in the packet. The sum of the oxidation numbers in N2O5 will be 0. The subscript of nitrogen will be 2. Oxygen is 5. Since nitrogen has multiple oxidation states, we're going to look at oxygen first. Oxygen has an oxidation number of negative 2. Since we have 5 oxygen, the sum will be negative 10. In order for the total to be 0, the sum for the nitrogens must be positive 10. Since we have two nitrogen, each nitrogen will have an oxidation number of positive 5. Let's look at a more difficult example in the packet. Here we have three elements in the compound. The sum of the oxidation numbers will be 0. Potassium has a subscript of 2. Chromium has a subscript of 2. And oxygen has a subscript of 7. Since chromium has multiple possible oxidation states, we're going to work on it last. Potassium is a group 1 element, so the oxidation number is positive 1. Since we have 2 of them, the sum will be positive 2. For oxygen, the oxidation number is minus 2. Since we have 7 oxygen, the sum will be negative 14. Therefore, the sum of the chromium will be positive 12. Since we have 2 chromium in the compound, each chromium will be positive 6. So the answer is potassium is positive 1, chromium is positive 6, and oxygen is negative 2. Let's look at another example. Here we have calcium nitrate. The sum of the oxidation numbers of a compound is 0. There is 1 calcium, 2 nitrogens, and 6 oxygen. This subscript 2 applies for the nitrate ion in the parentheses. Since nitrogen has many possible oxidation numbers, we will do that one last. Calcium has an oxidation number of positive 2 because it's a group 2 element, so the sum will be positive 2. For oxygen, the oxidation number will be negative 2, and the sum for the oxygen will be negative 12. Therefore, the sum of the nitrogen should be positive 10. Since we have two nitrogens, each one will be positive 5. Now try to do the rest of the questions yourself. Pause the video and resume as completed. Here are the answers. In the next part of the lesson, we're going to practice polyatomic ions from rule number 5. The sum of the oxidation numbers in a polyatomic ion is the charge of the polyatomic ion. For hydronium, the total will be positive 1. Hydrogen has a subscript of 3. Oxygen has a subscript of 1. Since hydrogen is less electronegative than oxygen, it will be positive and oxygen will be negative. So hydrogen has an oxidation number of positive 1, oxygen has an oxidation number of negative 2. As you can see, the sum of the oxidation numbers will be positive 1. Learning check number 6, which polyatomic ion has a charge of negative 3? Pause the video and resume as completed. By looking at table E in your reference table, the answer is choice 3, phosphate ion. Learning check number 7, what is the oxidation number of sulfur in hydrogen sulfate ion? Pause the video and resume is completed. The sum of the oxidation numbers in a polyatomic ion is the charge, so the total will be negative 1. The subscript of hydrogen is 1, sulfur is 1, and oxygen is 4. Since sulfur has multiple possible oxidation states, we'll work on it last. Hydrogen has the oxidation number of positive 1. 
So the sum of hydrogen will be positive 1. Oxygen has an oxidation number of minus 2. So the sum for oxygen will be negative 8. Therefore, the sum of sulfur should be positive 6 in order for the total to be negative 1. So the oxidation number of sulfur should be positive 6 since there's only one sulfur. So the answer is choice 4. Try to do the rest of the questions yourself. Pause the video and resume as completed. Here are the answers. This concludes the video lesson. Remember to do the Junipod homework.